Hello, I'm Colin Bradley. I'm going to be showing you now how to produce this lovely, simplistic coloured pencil project using the six coloured pencils. They are the luminance range, but you could use any of your own as long as you match the colours to me. I'm using the solvent, which is zested, and of a selection of paint brushes and obviously a sharpener. I'm really looking forward to this. As I say, it's going to be quite simply as a lot of sky, and that's where I'm going to begin. Now I'm going to start the ball rolling by using the white pencil over the whole of the sky area. Not the trees, not this forward bank. For the moment, not the water, although that will be also have white on it. But the distant hill will be included in the, this sky operation. So let me show you how it's going to work. The white on solid. Probably a good idea to do this a couple of times. Now, it doesn't really matter if you go over the trees because the coloured pencils will go over the top of whatever I put on here. But I don't. It's a waste because we don't really want the white under the tree. And that's the idea behind this. Okay. I'm using the light grey pastel matte paper, which I've used for all my coloured pencil project so far and it's really really good I couldn't recommend it enough but if you've got uh, your own paper then give it a go you can use most papers as long as it's, it's fairly substantial this is a 300 gram and you've got to have something that's substantial because otherwise it start buckling once we put the solvent on so that's the effect I'm, I want now I'm going to go right over there. Now when I get down to the distant hill, this is where we've got to be just a little bit fussy because those marks will show through. So what I'm going to do right away, I'm going to rub out my pencil line so that I'm going to be able to see it, but it's not going to be too strong. That's about right. Just a bit more there. It's about right. Okay. It's no good rubbing it out altogether. Well, it wouldn't matter because you could make your own hill up or, or a distant hill up. And the other thing to do is maybe rub out that water line as well. As I said, we're going to use the white on the water. So if it overspills on the water, it's not going to make a difference. But it would do if that graphite line was too strong. I think that'd be all right. Right, oh, so... I'm going to finish off the white. As I say, it's going to go right over here, down, and we'll just take it down to the water line. See what I mean by that line? It's showing up. I think I will take a bit more off, folks. All right, so now you can't rub the colour pencil out. All right, I warn you of that. Let's try that again. That's better. See, I can just see it. Now, I'm going to put blue on that eventually. And perhaps a little touch of black as well, as long as, as, long as it's only a little bit. And that will give us that distant hill look. Maybe a little bit of green, depends how I feel. So that's what I'm going to be doing all over there. Now, um, it's time to use a solvent. Just tell you what I've done here. I've transferred some of the liquid into a smaller pot. I find this easier to manage. Uh, I keep it there so you can see what I'm doing. I'm using a number six brush and I've got here uh, a tissue. Now, ordinarily, as I go on later on, I shall tell you to dip in here, take as much as you can of, and then put it on here to take even more off so you minimize the amount that actually is put on the, the um, paper or the color pencil however in this situation I want more to go on so I go straight from there although I take some off like that I go straight from the solvent to the paper by passing the tissue and the reason for this is white particularly is 
quite a tricky one to dissolve. So you have to go over like I'm doing now, over the whole area, putting a coat on. And that's probably as far as we need to go. And that's not dissolved yet. So what we do then is go back over it again. And you can now see that it's been agitated. This is important for the next operation when we put the blue and develop the sky tones. You'll know when it's uh, or emulsified because you lose all the little sparkly bits and it becomes smoother. Okay. You have to keep it wettish but not overdone. It, it takes a bit of practice, I've got to say. So it might be worth playing with the um, spare paper to do something like this, just to, to test it out before you actually begin your picture. But that's now nearly there. Just take a little bit more off there. And I've gone over the distant hill because we'll be doing this all at the same time as we do the produce the cloud. Now that's that's perfect, that is. So I'm going to do the rest of that exactly the same way. There's no need to see me do any more. And uh, then come back and we'll be putting the cover on. Now, that's it, all over. Just re-agitated this first little bit again because that's beginning to dry out. Okay, now we want to keep this as simple as we can. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw in here some, cl some clouds. Now, the clouds will be here. This will be sky. All right, now, I'm not going to make it very complicated. So let's just fill some of that in. You get the idea of this. So we can change our mind at any point in time. I can't change my mind from the blue, but I can change the one as far as the cloud is concerned. That's one cloud. So let's bring that to a close here. An interesting little tail off there. And we'll have another one. Now, since I've got white there, I'm going to have blue over here. And just come back down here. And what we want now is a cloud up there like that. If I did this again, it would be altogether different. This is just how you feel about it. Now that can be all blue sky now. Might be an idea to have some cloud coming from the trees there. So let's just do another one like that. Looks very scruffy, doesn't it, at the moment? But it won't. Now, there's another one, another cloud there, I think. So fill this with blue. And we'll have that one traveling maybe about there. Can we have a, yeah, that will do. Let's have a couple, couple of what? Couple like that. Now down here, this is distant, so um, we can still put it in. But what I want to do here is to make that just a little bit less blue. And I think I'll break into that one too. So we'll have a cloud there that will be blue. And coming down here, now this is where we're going to have a, a little bit of a problem as far as the line is concerned. So, for a moment, I'm going to suggest that you do that. Let's break that cloud up. Single cloud on its own, but that can be part of another. There you go. Now, coming back up the top, we want to make it just a little stronger at the top. So just go back over with some blue and drop down to maybe about there. 
So it's a bit stronger there, and equivalent down to about there. I'll just leave that. I thought we'd leave that alone for the moment. And give us an. Now I'm going to put my finger on this in a minute or two once it's dry, and that will smooth everything off. But it will also interfere with the clouds. But don't worry about that. There's ways we can get over that. And just before we. I leave you. I'm going to come back in with some white just down here. And this is on top of the solvent. Now, obviously, because I'm going over the blue, it's not going to be too white, but it will be light enough to, to affect what I'm going to be doing in a moment. So, you have to give me a minute. That's got to dry off. So, about 10 minutes and it'll be dry, and then I can proceed with it. Okay, we're ready now. So here we go. Finger at the ready. Now this is a bit scary when you first do this, but it does turn out really well. Just check every now and again your finger, because obviously you're going to be removing some of it. As I said before, don't worry about the the fact that you're you're not being able to keep the shape of the clouds. That you're never going to be able to do that with a finger. But the finger is far be, far better than say a color shaper or any other blender. Do do what I'm doing though. Just take it off so you're drying your finger as you go along. Now that's working out very well. Okay, let's come back. Now I'm coming down now this is another area but let me just turn this around because it's easier to get my finger in here now what i'm hoping if i can just overlap that a little bit on the distant hill we can bring that down we're going to be doing that separately anyway but you can just about make out that um, graphite line that i've left there Up, right up to the end doesn't matter if you go over the edges of the land that's all going to be taken care of color pencil goes over really well you see we've got the master of the ship very clearly there okay now that you see how nice that's coming up now start again now because this is a little wetter here so you want to make that just a little drier with your finger but at the same time as we pass over now it's just beginning to dry out so we've got a much you see how much smoother that's coming and it's a little stronger at the top okay and then come back We'll need to go over it once more before we can call it a day. But you see, that is really coming up nicely now. But it's a lighter at the bottom where I put that white in. Now, just now we can just interfere with the clouds slightly. You are going to change them. There's no way you're not going to be able to do that. But by doing what I'm doing, you're just giving itself a, a looser feel, see? And I'm going to come back in with the white in a little while. Right, now that's pretty good. So that's the second application. Now, now I'm going to go back in with some blue just along the top edge here, because I want that to be just a little stronger, like that. Just let the pencil glide across. You've still got solvent on there. And that's about, that's about right. Okay, now down the bottom, I'm just going to put a little bit of white added to this so that we get a graduation from here, light, up to about there. Now, we start from the bottom this time. 
that white will emulsify into the colour we've got there. Now you see how much smoother that is now. That's almost, well, I think, to be honest, that's finished. Okay, let's come above the top here. And then dra gradually drag that back down so it's got a nice even transition up here too. And one final well, no, use a finger like I am, just swirl it round. It gets a it, it really nice effect. There we are. Just, I just feel that that could have just a little more depth on there. So let's put just a bit more in it there. Right. Happy. Now we come back into the cloud. Now this time, what we can do now is just you put the cloud in again, but this time just fluff the edges up. Now I'm not going to use my finger. Now I'm going to use a color shaper. If you haven't got a color shaper, well, you probably just have to leave it like I've, I'm showing you here. Now do we have to put more silver on? Yes, we probably will. But this time. In a different with a different method now let me just put this over so you can see what's going on i'm going to you remember i said that i'm going to drag it from there and then onto there you don't you want to minimize the amount you put on here now and i don't mind at all if you drag some of that blue into the cloud because it makes it look more natural that way like that oh that's nice that's one i do this one a little bit more white on there. I thought I'd have enough, but I'm not. I've got to put some more in. Oh, that's nice. You see, you've designed in your own cloud. It's a very, very good system. I'm using a number four brush here. You could use a smaller brush, but the bigger the brush, the more you will be able to hold the liquid. Smaller brushes, you need to recharge more often. And it's nice just to have a, just a few little wisps like that. You can, Accentuate those if you want with a little bit of white. And once again, go into clouds. You've got some blue on your brush. Makes it much more realistic. Swish it round. See, that's really nice. Not many left, a couple more here. But we, we can play with these a little bit. They don't have to be as intense as those. Lovely. 
one more. I like this little one in the middle here. Make a little bit more of it. one here well there's not much of this one so let's just touch the edges but we could make it it's nice that it comes from behind because that's going to be quite a very dark tree when I finish it so let's just put some more white on there from here that will be a, a dark tree and then into there again swirl it round so it has that lovely wispy look I think this is it the last little bit Almost, you could almost tag it onto that one, couldn't you? Let's see what we can do here. You don't have to do this, you. But that's rather nice to have it looking as though it's. It was originally. One cloud. There we are. This is the beauty of this particular system. You can change your mind. I like that. Maybe. If you want to, this is again, it's up to you. You can put just a few little distant clouds in. You don't have to do too much with them. Just now, I said I was going to use the color shade, but well, I haven't been able, I haven't had to. But had I wanted to, this is how I would have done it. It's basically the same idea. As if you were using the paintbrush but as I said I haven't needed to use that so and you may not either but you can't use a finger anymore on that that's it finished so now distant hill distant hill now I've already put the white on there so what I'm going to do with this I'm going to use blue we are a bit restricted in colors I'm going to follow the line that um, graphite line that I put in but be quite soft with it don't don't press too hard because that's going to believe me that will brighten up and darken up sorry not brighten up it darken up quite a lot Because what I want to do here, and I'll show you what I want to do. I want the white to be right up against that. Uh, let's put more in then. You'll see what I mean when I when I finish it. And by varying it slightly, like I'm doing now, when I emulsify that in a little while. That's going to, it's not going to be a solid colour. You'll see what I mean in a minute. I want it quite light coming from here because that's going to be dark. But what is now quite important, and I will show you how we get to do that, that line there has got to be quite strong. Right. Now, I'm still going to stick, I think, to the number four brush, turn the picture upside down and work this way. What we want to do is work up against that edge. It's more important than this edge, believe it or not, because we've got our water that's going to come right up to that.
and there we are. Right. Now we go the other way. Start here and darken it. Now it's got to be dark enough to go against the sky, which that is. And you remember I said to you we will we can probably work some of those pencil strokes. You can do this with your paintbrush. Don't just fill it all in, leave it like that. That's going to look really nice when we finish it. That's just about perfect as far as the balance is concerned. You've got just enough showing, but it's not too heavy, not too strong. Now we know that looks good, doesn't it? Some of the white is still there, still showing through. See? There's just a little more. I think I'm happy with that. Yes, I am. That's, oh, sorry, I didn't see the end bit. Sorry, I'll, I'll do that again. Pretend I'm doing it again. Come along here. It's when I'm close up and I move the picture around, it creates a problem. But that does look nice, doesn't it? So that's that. Now, while we're here, I'm, I'm not going to actually do the water yet. I'm going to have to have to sharpen my... You have to sharpen your pencils, folks. That's the one thing that... It's a bit of a pain, especially when you're in a flow. But it's really important now. And then we have that line. White right up close to it, gives a really crisp edge to it. And then you bring it out. Now I'm going to bring it out as far as here. The light goes in. Already you can see what this is going to look like. These are, these are rocks, so they're going to be quite strong. And you want the, the light to come down to about there. We can pick this up as well later, but I want to show you how we sort this horizon line out. Stick with the colour, the um, number. Four brush. Exactly the same as the sky, you've got to emulsify this. And do we put blue in it? Yes, we do, but not very much. Basically, you want to keep this as light as you can because you've got a contrast between the distant hill and the rocks in the front. Coming between there. But you might be, it might pay you to do what I'm doing and that is do this sec section first rather than doing the whole thing because we've got a lot of detail going in here. And as I say, I'm not worried at all if I go over the top of the rocks because they're going to be a lot darker. There we are. Now that, that's emulsified really nicely. And while it's still damp, we can put just a little bit in. Now, when I say a little bit, I do mean just a little bit. That little bit, not like the distant hill, otherwise you'll end up with the same colour. That's it. Now, we could use, let's try using the colour shaper. 
for this, you can just drag that like that. No, perhaps, perhaps I can't do it that way. What you've got to do is, is put the, the colour in so it's just just there but not very strong. I don't think I'd done. I might want, I might think about putting some more in that. And then what we do is leave it. But you can't have it like that. It's got to be, because this is a distance, it's got to be like that. Um, do I want any more of it? I'd put a little more in. But I don't want, I don't want to do too much. You can't use your finger here. You've got no control. You'd end up by going into the distant hill. So use the colour shape if you've got it. If you haven't, you could actually use the white again. And that would also spread it. So it's up to you. If you've got one of these, might as well use it. That is nice. That's just right. Lovely. So we hope you've got the sky, distant hill, and the, and the water. Now, what I'm going to do is sharpen my whites up because the next thing we can do is the remaining water. Um, I don't think there's anything else I can tell you there. Those little tiny little bits come from the paintbrush. Don't try to get them out like that. Wait until it all dries and then you can just pick them off. Now, we're going to emulsify the water. Same operation as before. Spread it straight from the bottle or the jar. Pick up bits you missed. Like that. Right, that's got it all covered now. Let's go back and spread it that neatly. Oh, um, another thing I don't know whether I did between there, I don't think I did. Watch these bits because we'll be putting some blue on there and we don't really want the blue to go on raw paper. Um, if you did, it would be too harsh. The white is a buffer and we'll be using it a lot as well. Um, I'll be using it for the sand. Uh, I think I'll probably even be using it for that. When you're a bit restricted in colour, which we are here, we've only got six pencils we're using, you've got to do things like that. If you had a larger range of pencils, then you could choose um, different base colours. Another area there I've missed out on. All these are important. You'll see why when we get down to the putting the detail in. Yes, as I was saying, you, you, um, you don't need, with a larger pencil range, you can use... Uh, probably better base colours. But with a restricted pencil range, you have to compromise a little bit. But not much. As you will see, this is going to still look, turn out really nice. Just, just a little bit more down the bottom. There you go. Now I'm just going to just go back over that again to make sure that it's all emulsified. All right, good. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good to me. Okay, now the blue. <coughs> now, as I said, exactly the same. Well, not quite the same because what we can do here, let me do this first. We can have... This sort of thing. Now, what, what are you doing, Colin? Well, what I'm doing is 
I'll show you. A little bit of blue in there, not much, just a little. And a little bit of blue there. And leave a little, little tiny bit of white, like that. As though it's a little wave coming in. I hope I can maintain that. Looks good there. Same there, a little bit of wash, you see what I mean? Now it goes back to there and then there. Right. There's a wash. There. It's a bit like watercolour, you it's what you leave. Yeah, and then as we come back here. we lighten it like we have up here so it continues down from here now and down here too now this this is where we just have a little bit of white left on that as though it's coming into the shoreline and then be another one like that. And yeah, let's see what we can do with that. Don't use finger. Use the um, brush there you go to do it with and now this is where I want one little wash there see that one and just to emphasize that you can put just a little bit of white on it there to make it look a little bit more natural Put some more white in there it wouldn't hurt either let's see if we can do it again that's a good one that might work if you put just a little spot of that there as well the nice thing about this, as, as opposed to watercolour, is that you've got time because it doesn't dry. You see, now we've got another one there that uh, could look really attractive. And what about down here? It must be dark up against that white. Another one. Like that. I think that's that's all right. I think that's fine. I'm, I'm going to use some white on there just to just just colour it a little, but leave the wash. There you go. What about in here? It's the same. The white represents the wash. I'm going to have sand against that. Lovely. Now, something else I want to show you as well. Um, I'm looking at the sky and love the sky, except I don't like that. Why is that, Cole? It's, it's it not got any shape to it. So let me show you what you can do with it. I'll put a bit of solvent on it to start with. I'm going to break. I'm going to break into the cloud like that. Mm 
into there as well. And a little bit more because we want it to be just that little bit stronger. Like that. And from there. And like that. And just disappear out of there. Now it's going to have to be a little, just a little bit darker than that because it's got to match up there. Now if you don't want to do this, don't do it folks. I'm just suggesting that you could even start off if you want like this. Don't have to break it like I'm just showing you different techniques you can do. re agitate that so it all matches and comes in together. That's better. Bear in mind we can bring the white back as well. Smooth that off. Stop that. Annoying little hairs. Can you can you see that little hair? From the brush. Hmm. Gonna be a stubborn one that one. Get another dry brush. That's better. That's got it. Right, I'm gonna sharpen my white up and we're just play with that cloud a little bit let's go back over it as I showed you before I like that a lot better Go like that. and in here, let's also just do a little bit there to show you you can. Play with it a little more, a little bit of blue. Okay. Just a little bit more, another hair look. Oh well, I think I've played enough. I think I'll let that go now. Like that. Great. What's next, Colin? What's next? I think what we'll do next is we'll come over here and have a change of pace. Now I'm going to be I'm going to put a green on here. Using the green. And don't worry about going into the sky like that. That's what we're looking for. Just start with the dark green. Now the reason I say that is because you're against a light sky. I'll do one and then I can show you the other in stages. Now, having put that on, then I've got another green here, which is a lighter green. You go, Why didn't you do that first? It's better to do it the way I'm doing it. Because the dark green 
is the first one that goes on and that's the one that really does register. Okay, good. Now we can use and just make sure that that's quite dark. I want to darken the edge there. That's it. Now I'm going to use a little bit of black. It doesn't look much, does it? You watch what happens when I put the solvent on. The bottom of the tree would be a little darker here. But I want it lighter on this side. And the little spots here and there. It's darker. And uh, I'm going to bring the green back again. Here. Right. And I'm going to emulsify it. Now, number two brush, I think, would be ideal for this. Put the solvent closer so you can see it. And instead of just doing like I've done before, you now dab it like that. And you get amazing results. But just like the sky, you've got to keep doing it. You can't, it's not magic done. You've got to keep going back over it and making sure that you're are dissolving and again you tap it off you don't want too much on there if this floods it will flood over the sky and I think you'll agree that that's pretty spectacular the way that's coming up it's almost unbelievable isn't it But it's not a fluke, folks. I'll do it again in a minute. This is the dark part. Now, this is going to be very dark through here anyway. In a little while. That's a lovely tree. Now, let's do it again. I think I ought to show you this because it is a, it's very interesting to see it done. I think I'll sharpen that up. It's interesting to see it be done. And when you see that in the moment alongside that one, it really will be quite spectacular. You've got to be as random as you can. You don't want to make anything forming a pattern. You see how easily it goes over the top of the blue as well. A little break there. Have another. Yeah. That's a nice design. Now when you get down to here, we've got we're amalgamating the two together. What I'm going to be doing in a moment is putting some dark colour on here, like that, so that we have a separation between the two trees. You'll see what, see how that works out in a moment or two. I think it might be nice there. See that little bit of light I've left? I really didn't have room there, but I'm, here I have a little bit of light. Oh, that's another one. If it doesn't work and you don't like it, you can always cover it up. It's quite a nice idea to leave. Just a little bit, just a bit there as well. come down over the edge of that distant hill and this is all going to be filled in anyway so you're not going to see it coming through there doing it the way I'm doing it creates the patterns that you see there lighter green
back with the other green again. And this is where you're starting to form the irregular patterns. Looks, looks so good in the tree. And also this will be where I'll be putting the black as well, which like now. Even before I've put the solvent on, you can actually see that. Now that's going to work out. Okay, number two brush. <laughs> Whoops. I covered one of those... Um, all them holes in the tree there. I've left that one though. Let's see if I can leave this one down here. There we are. Done. Now you can go back over these if you want to. Just put a little bit of light back in. I don't particularly think you needed to here, but it's just if you did, you can. But I'd leave that alone. Let that dry out. What's next? I think we'll do these. Now, when I've I did this both in pastel pencil and watercolor. And people really had a problem with these rocks. Everyone. I don't think there was one person who did this, and we've had hundreds and hundreds of people doing it, have actually found it easy. But you can probably imagine it isn't easy. That's the first thing I'm going to do. Now the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put white on here. Remember I told you I was going to do this. So that's going to go on. It might as well go up everywhere. And there's no need to see me do all that. I'm going to put that on there. All over here. Um, I'm not really sure whether I want to do it in here. Maybe, maybe I will. Maybe I will. Um, because, because I haven't done this in coloured pencil before. But I think it's a nice idea just to put some white in. on the rocks too. We'll see when I use the colours on here in a minute. See how the white actually plays quite an important part like that. And so let me finish that off and I'll come back and we'll we'll start putting these. I'll do the rocks and the background there. Right. Now it's the same idea here. We're going to put some black on here. I 
take a bit of care here as you don't want the black to go and, and stray onto the sky or the distant landmass. Now go round the rock, okay? So you'll see how this is all going to work in a minute. It's best to do the rocks first because you can see them and you can see the colour you're putting in. I'm going to put some dark up in there. And yeah, we've got a couple of tree trunks here. We'll see if we can sort them out. Uh, nearly there. It is worth waiting for, folks. Now, having done that, we go all the way up there. Well, let's just do a little bit for you. do a little tiny bit more then I'll leave a section of this un unfinished so you can see what it looked like before I put the solar on. Now here we're going to have to have some green there could be some green intermix with the dark. Now once again go around those rocks we can shape them as time goes on a lot better and come around the edge again you can imagine this is grass it's not all over just in play and now here there'll be sort of seaweed and other like that Now, I may have covered a couple of those rocks up, I don't know, but, it, but I've found a couple more, look. There's one, one there and one there. You can do this. This is it's permissible. Another one there. There's, there's other couple up there as well. When you get used to this, you think, hmm, well, that's interesting. I, I can find things that I didn't know I had. A bit of grass up there. Yes, that's quite nice, that. Okay. Well, that's, I think, as much as I want there. You can already see the idea that I'm trying to achieve there. Um, and I think the orange, too. It might be a good idea to put some of that in. Again, you'll be quite surprised when I put the solvent on this, how it reacts. Quite a lot up in here. We haven't got any browns, you see, in our range here, so we're going to have to do a bit of compromising. Again, not everywhere. Just in where you feel like it. Now, here's the big test comes now and just before we do that let's put just a little bit of white you can't put it against the edge because it wouldn't show up with the water but you can make sure that you've got plenty of white on there right 
Now the, um, I'm, I'm just wondering whether I should use a smaller brush. It's going to take a bit longer, but I've got more accuracy with this. Let's start, let's start here. Again, dab it. And you'll be amazed at what actually comes out. Oh, I was going to leave that bit, wasn't I? Oh, silly me. Never mind. I'll have to do it again. There we are. That's one little bit. Yeah, that's come. I think I might have to have that just a little darker there. It won't show up that much against the background otherwise. It's a good decision to have the number one brush there. You can see what I'm doing here. I'm just taking little little bits off. Now this is the line that we gotta make sure we get right. One rock, two rocks, three rocks. From there. You've got the idea of that? It's good, doesn't it? Now in here it's got to be quite dark. We've got to have some shadows. I did have some tree trunks at one time there. Yeah, that'll do. Now we're coming into the rocks again, round the rock. I like that one too. Let's get rid of that. I like this. That, I didn't put that in, it just happened to be there. I don't like that one. Let's get rid of that. And what you don't want, you don't like, you can just cover up. Right, well that's covered it. Now, what we want to do now is to do something with the rocks themselves. To start with putting a little bit, you know, after I put the green and the black in here, well, just emulsify them. And another one here. And then, then what we do is we just go back in with the black, put a bit of shadow on them. And the shadow is coming from this direction.
don't quite know what's happening up here, but you have to wiggle it, wiggle the pencil about and make it work. It's another colour we have I didn't use, and we could use this lighter green. While it's still a bit damp there. Oh, that looks nice. There we are. Good. Where was I? Yeah, let's come into this a bit more. A bit more definition. Now you can also put some black back in to put just a little bit of interest and depth. In this bank. Again, you could overdo this, so stop when you're ahead. I don't think that was a rock, but it is now. And then you come back over with the white and just put the final touches to those rocks like that. Great, done. Now what's next? Well this is next. Um, I'm leaving the boats deliberately and any detail like this over here to the end. So let's concentrate on this now, the beach. What I'm going to do now is put some orange. Don't go too mad with this. You can always put more on, but otherwise you'll have an orange beach. Well, we haven't got any choice but to have an orange beach because it's the colour we've got that would be suitable. But you don't want to be too strong with it. Just, I would say that that was probably enough. We could always put it on again if we have to. Just turn it round the other way and do the edge. It's a nice idea too to have a corner a little darker <laughs> like that. And now I would use the number four here. Now this has to be completely emulsified. So that's what it's going to look like. Having the white underneath though does help because it gives you a buffer and turns into that colour from here. It's more ochery. Once again, it's that white underneath that's being a little stubborn. But you've just got to keep going until you lose all the little sparkly bits. 
I don't really mind some of it being on there, to be honest, because it's a beach and you could mistake that for perhaps some shingle. But that's nice. Oops, no, I've lost you up here. Don't bother to go around any of those little boys. That's it. Right, well that's not bad at all. I'm happy with that. But you can, if you want, and I do, just add some on top of the solvent this time. So a little bit of extra weight there. It's quite nice to have that. It's also nice to have it possibly on the edge there so it just suggests that the water has left a wet mark. And, and the, the boat too. Now this is a shadow now, or will be. And there's another one that will come into here. We can put some other colour on that. I think nothing to here. I'm just, I'm just wondering what I'm going to do with that. I've got a, a mark and I'm not sure what I intended there. Put some put some water in there, shall we? Seeping, seeping in. Right now, over here, this is interesting. I put I've already put white on there. So what I want to do now is put a little bit of black. Now I'm going to draw this in with the black. Whatever takes your fancy, really. Now, number one brush. Let's see what we can do with that. Uh, awkward little bit. It's probably it's a, it's a bit of black there. This is the sort of thing you've got to be careful of. All right. Let's do emulsify this. See the black stretch spreads quite dramatically if you're not careful, so you don't want to do too much. It's a little more there. So 
I wouldn't overdo that, do that. But that is fine. Get a bit of orange in there as well. Fine, that's great. So back to this now. What I'm going to I'll let that dry off a little bit because of what I want to do is to try to use my finger on it if I can, make it as smooth. No, that's that's not bad at all. I can't do anything else because it's going to be. Um, yes, it it it, it will um, smudge the, into the water, but there I can get away with. Now, do I want any more? I think I probably do now. Let's put some. This time, we'll have it dry-ish. Right, great. Now, I think it's probably a good idea to do up something else, but I've got restrictions of colour, so those are the colours that I've got. Let's move them over. Right, I've got to choose. Now, blue won't work. Black will, as long as you're careful. So you just want a little bit of black in. Use the side of the pencil now just to drag it really from that bank. And I think that's as far as I want to go there. And just some in the front. As I say, you're a little restricted in colour. I can use green and I will use green, but the ivory is a good blender in this situation. Good. Now, what about what we can do here is put some seaweed and again, don't be over ambitious with this. Just a couple of bits and touch with the black as well that's probably enough touch of the number one brush to emulsify that oh, that's fine i think we'll call that done now the other the other thing is we've got shadows and this will have to be same idea as that the shadow would be the black and in here too and the orange use a solvent on them right okay well we've done really well what we're going to sort out now is the boat so let's start off. Now we've got to you've got to be careful here. Uh, what I would do, I think, is probably you've got to be you've only got so many colours. Well, let's start off with the blue and put the blue in here and there. Sharpen it, Colin. You really got to have sharp points when you're going around areas like this. the black same idea again we'll sharpen it up Straight away, use a solvent on it. Number one brush. And 
I'd already put white underneath here. So far, so good. Now, I think what I'll do is I'll have a. Hmm, oh, that's green. I think we'll have it a green boat. I don't want perhaps the other green just a little. Add a little bit of variation. Otherwise, we can have it white as well. I've already put white on there. So let's see what that looks like. And before I get to it, I've got a pin line there. What do you reckon? What colour do you reckon? Ooh, look at that, you see? That's picked up just a little bit of blue there. And just about get out of that. Okay, well I've got that sorted out. And what I want to do now is just a little bit of, perhaps a little bit of black would be the key here, just a touch on that edge. And then what we do is we drag that out from there. And that will give us a shadow. on the bow of the boat. There we are, that's it. Good. Well I think I'll I think I'll make it a blue line there. A nice sharp blue line. Pin line because I'm gonna make the, the the this area orange. something on there. I've got the mask to worry about and I've got, I'm a bit concerned about that. So what I'm going to do now is do the sail. That will be, basically that will be white with just a little black on it. I think we'll have just a little touch of black. That's all right. Again, we're going against water, so you've got to make it sure it's it's quite good. I think maybe no, perhaps not. Right, the orange now, a light orange, and go all the way all over there. And but here it needs to be a little stronger for the shadow. into that. There's a little bit of black. Make sure that it evens off like that. That's good. And in here, well, I think what I'll do here, I'm going to put a black top to it like that. Overshoot slightly, and the little windows. I 
like that. Um, I think we might put some blue in that, you know. Looks a bit. Oh, that's quite nice. Sharpen the white. We get some white highlights on as well. Like that. Rigging. What am I going to do with that? Now, what's very difficult about this is if you were to use a pencil, say the black, for instance, it would be far too strong. So what I'm going to do there is I'm going to use the a rule, first of all, and a pencil. Now, I've got, I think this is an F. Let's just show you. Yes, it is. This is an F. It's somewhere between a B and an HB. That's it. Let's do it again. If you try doing that with a with a, a color pencil, it just wouldn't work at all. And let's do the same thing here. Lovely. Now the rigging. Oh, this is. Uh, just thought I've got a. cross piece there, put that in. Now the rigging coming from, it's just a little, another little mark for it, for us, coming from there. And it comes down to there. Now this time I don't want it to be as, as strong as that because it's, it's quite thin. That's fine. And let's put another one in. From there down to there. Restrict this. Don't obviously there's more there will be more than I'm putting in, but don't don't do that. Okay, that goes down to there, probably there. And one more. Get us to the back of the boat. Actually it goes to there. Uh, hmm. Let's go to there. Lovely. And also, doing this freehand, that's fine. There's well, that's the boat. Um, no, it's not. Again, I'd use a pencil here. There. And we'll make that. What colour shall we do that? Well, let's have a let's have a blue one. Uh, no, let's have an orange one. It'll have to be darker than the sand. It's a little spot of black in it as well. Shadow. Um, Solvent. Now all I've got left is this little rowboat. So now I think we'll have this. I've got I already put white on, so I'm going to put some more on. And inside here we'll have it with we'll have it as a white boat, but with some shadows in it. So let's put just a little bit of black in there. Like that. Very light, don't be don't be heavy handed with this. That's probably enough. Just like that.
Great. Now, now the, the orange. It's a little stronger there, I think. Leave the seats, you see, white. Now we can spread that a little so it slightly discolors the inside of the boat. Just like that. If you overdo it like I've done there, just get your tissue and dab it off. You'll find it will weaken it a little bit. We'll put a little bit more white in there. And same here. I think we'll have that. Uh, let's put more, more on. Um, that can be the shadow. There's probably just a little spot here. It's only a small detail, but it could be quite important. Lovely. All right. Now the, the bottom of the boat here, I think we'll have that as another blue. should really think about having some little bit of black as well just on the bottom there we are well I think that looks pretty good to me I'm just going to I, you, I don't know if you've seen me do this before I think it, if you haven't it's quite interesting. I'll just take the colour off the the black. I want that to be just a little stronger. Just there. And there. Great. Well, I think that's it. I don't think I'm going to do any more. I think that looks pretty good. I hope you've enjoyed watching that. Let's give you a better view of it. Well, there are the finished picture. Pleased with that. It's amazing, isn't it? You can just do that with just six pencils. And, of course, the magic solvent, too. I look forward to seeing you again sometime on another project. Bye for now.